Hi, I'm Thomas from Real Guitar Success. Today is day number five in my 30 day of guitar coaching. So welcome. Today I'm gonna to answer the question, how do you know when it's time to move on? In other words, when you're learning guitar and you're practicing exercise or a song, how do you know when it's time to move on to that next exercise or that next song? I've gotten this question a lot over the years and I've developed out of it what I call the 80% rule. Now the idea of the 80% rule is that you practice something up to a place where you think it's about 80% on the way to perfection. Then you move on. You don't want to stay on one thing until it's perfect or even almost perfect. You'll just get stuck there and you're not really taking advantage of the additional learning and practice you can get by using it in some other way. At the same time, what's even more common is to move on before you're actually at that 80% place. And this is because I think a lot of people get bored of doing the same thing over and over. But if you move on too quickly, you're very likely to feel over time more and more incompetent and it's a perfect recipe for feeling overwhelmed and frustrated. Of course, 80% is not an exact number. Don't get hung up on that. The idea is to learn to make judgments and you do it by making judgments. You decide in your own judgment if this is about 80% of where it should be. And you can use, you can compare it to videos or if you have a teacher, what they're doing to see how it compares. But the bottom line is you are developing your judgment muscle and it really does work. You'll get better and better at it over time. So what about that last 20%? Well, you'll find if you go on to some type of progressive program that you're gonna shore up that last 20% over time by using it in other exercises. And in fact, I've often found that when I go back and review some old material, I'm amazed at how much I've improved even though I've moved on to something else. I wanna talk for a moment about two types of learning, sequential learning and non-sequential learning. That sounded like a mouthful, didn't it? It's not really terribly complicated. Sequential learning is step by step and non-sequential means not step by step. So think of the difference between a numbered list and a checklist where you can check it off randomly. In sequential learning, things build one on top of the other. You wanna make sure that you're competent enough on the steps before, otherwise you'll start getting lost later on. So think of math. You certainly wanna be able to do basic arithmetic before you go on to multiply and division. And Needless to say, if you want to go on to algebra, you're going to be lost if you can't do the basic math stuff. Sequential learning works great for getting a good solid foundation efficiently, as well as, you know, basic building blocks. With non-sequential learning, you apply and integrate those building blocks. This is how you develop competency and proficiency. Think about learning a language for a minute. Now, it'd be very helpful to have step-by-step -step grammar lessons where they explain a concept and then build short sentences and then you practice longer sentences. Certainly, it'd be helpful to have some kind of phrase practice where you're adding words and using them. This is all sequential learning. You're building one thing on top of another and then adding more. At the same time, it's important if you really want to learn to speak another language that you have opportunities to just speak to other people and fumble and try to understand what they're saying. This process helps you integrate the grammar and all the other stuff that you learned and actually be able to use it. And you could read a book and practice it forever, but you'd never be fluent in the language unless you just got out there and used it. And when you're doing that, that's non-sequential because things are coming at you in all different levels. You can't choose, oh, I don't know that word yet. Could you not use that one? This 80% rule I'm talking about works really well for sequential type learning. So in my Real Guitar Success program, we have a system called Beginner's Journey. It's a very step-by-step -step path to get all the basics as quickly as possible. Each of those lessons builds on the previous one before it. With non-sequential type learning, the 80% rule doesn't really apply. We have different criteria. With that language example I used earlier, there's no way to actually gauge how much percentage you got better from speaking to other people. But the way you can gauge it is just how much time did you spend at? Because it's a, an important part of learning to be competent at a skill like language or playing music. In Real Guitar Success, we have something called the Guitar Gym, and that's where my students get the non-sequential type learning. Students will spend a certain amount of time without worrying about whether they mastered the session or not. Jamming with other people and just picking up things off the street is another way to get non-sequential learning. So how do you know if you're at 80%? criteria do you use? Well, here's the thing. 
you are developing your judgment muscle. Of course, you'll compare, maybe if you're taking video lessons, look at the videos and see how close it is to what you're doing. Use your ear, see how it sounds. If you have a private teacher, you can compare your playing and have them play it and compare what it sounds like. But ultimately, you are learning to make judgment calls, and this is important. It's best done by making judgment calls, seeing the results that you get, and then making more judgment calls. You can always go back. So if you're doing a video program, you can go back if you feel like you've gotten it over your head and review. And then you'll know that maybe you moved on too fast in the past. And little by little, you're gaining experience and you're gaining the ability to make judgments that will be more and more accurate. So you might say, what if I'm stuck? Or what if I'm at about 80% on most of the exercise, but there's one part I just can't seem to get past. So this is where you pull out your practice tools. And the first one of those is to isolate and work on the part. So if you're working on something that's bigger, isolate the part that you're stuck on and work on that. Another option might be to go back into previous material that used that and see if maybe some review might be in order or some more work on a previous lesson. I'll give you an example. I'll just make up one. Let's say you're working on an exercise that's changing from the G chord to the C chord. And you got to strum to go with it too, okay? So you got several things going on. You're strumming, you're changing chords. The strumming is going pretty smooth. And you can play the chords well enough individually, but you stumble when it comes time to changing from one to the other. Okay, so the problem is changing chords. Maybe in previous lessons, you didn't spend enough time in actually working on changing chords. Or maybe the opportunity here is to just isolate that, take those two chords, let's say it's G and C, and just practice, maybe for days, going from G to C, G to C, and try speeding up with a metronome, G to C, G to C. Um, it's, there's no one right way to do this, and I'm more interested in getting the principle across than the specific procedure. So two options, isolate and work on the part, or go back, review some material that deals with the thing that's kind of holding you back, or a little of both, maybe. Hey, that was fun hanging out with you. Before you go, let me know what you think about the 80% rule. Does this make sense to you? Does this look like something you'd be able to apply? Do you have some other tips on practicing that have worked for you and that we could all share? Let me know in the comments below. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye for now.